You're watching the Brother Henry and You Show. Engaging. Informative. Inspirational. Enjoy today's program. Welcome back. We've been talking about rejection. I am your host, Henry Harris. Welcome to the Brother Henry and You Show. I'm so excited that you've tuned in. I've been having a blessed time uh, talking about this, and we've just started this series last week. And I'm still trying to process all the information myself, so I can imagine how you how you are accepting this. But today, um, we'll be going into part two of our series, The Walk Through Rejection. Again, uh, rejection is something that a lot of people deal with, a lot of people struggle with. And I believe it is a needed message, and that's why I wanted to talk about it right here. If you follow me long enough, you know I love tackling subjects that maybe the traditional church don't want to discuss or talk about. But I feel like we need to discuss it. I feel like we need to talk about it. Because that's the only way we will be free unless we put it all out on the table. Let's dive into part two. So part two today we're going to talk about who am I? That's going to be the message. Who am I? Sometimes rejection can become so um, overwhelming in our lives that we forget who we are. We actually lose ourselves because that's what rejection has created in our hearts. And we know that this is not a great place to be. This is not a position that you should be in. Sometimes uh, we get so lost in the concept of rejection that we lose who we are. We get carried away by the pain, the resentment, the hurt that we have a, what I call a mistaken identity. And many people today, they struggle with that. Have you become so lost in your rejection? I'm going to start out with this question. Have you become so lost in your rejection that you no longer know who you are? I have at one time. Have you become so lost in your pain, in your hurt, in your struggle? Have those things affected you in that way? that you have lost who you are. Some of us don't even know who we are because what defines us is our circumstances. But I want you to know today that what defines you is not your circumstances and what you're going through. What defines you is Papa. And I want you to know that he is fond of you. Some rejection simply comes by not knowing who we are. Because how many know that if we truly know who we are, knew who we were, when rejection comes, not that it won't be hard, but for some of us, if we really knew and was established in the fact of who we are in Christ, when rejection does come, it won't bother us as much because you are firmly established and you know who you are and nobody can tell you any differently. If you ever find yourself asking, who am I? I don't know who I am anymore. If you find yourself asking yourself that question, that's a good start, my friend. Because you're, you're admitting it. I need help. I'm struggling with rejection. I don't know how to come to grasp with this. I don't know how to come to terms with this. I need help. Whenever we start to base our identity on someone or something other than how God sees us, it opens the door to rejection. If you find yourself lost in rejection today, you need to ask yourself this question. What and who defines who I am? We're living in a society today that, that is driven by I am what I do. And the truth is, you are not what you do. You are who God says you are. You may do those things, 
but you are not those things. Many today, their identity is either in two places. Number one, what I do, and number two, who I am. I will lean more towards who I am instead of what I do. Because if you allow the world to define you, if you allow friends to define you, if you allow your spouse to define you or anybody to define you outside of how God sees you, that does open the door to rejection. So I believe there is nothing wrong with what you do. But don't get so caught up in what you do that you forget who you are. You may say, well, I'm a pastor. Um, I'm a teacher, or you may say, I'm a doctor, uh, I'm a Sunday school teacher, I'm a lawyer. Those things are great. You may be those things, but it still doesn't define who you truly are. Many of us have an identity problem because we don't know who we are. Let's say you are basing your identity on a friend, and this friend later rejects you or disapproves of you. This can be partially your fault because you had your faith and identity in the wrong place to begin with. Sometimes we put too much trust and confidence into people or into a friend or, or whoever, an associate or co-worker. We put all our faith and trust in that person and then when they reject us, when they disapprove of us, when they don't validate us or accept us, guess who ends up hurt in the long run? You are the one that ends up hurt. Why? Because you put your full trust and confidence in that person. So sometimes we have our trust and confidence and our faith in the wrong places, which, it, which can also open the door to rejection. Are we looking or searching in the wrong places today? Where do I get my true identity from? This calls us all on the carpet, whether we like it or not. Where are you truly getting your identity from? Now, I can't speak for anyone else, but I received my full identity when I was exposed to the good news of the gospel. I discovered that I had my trust in the wrong places. If you were to be honest, you would say the same thing. I had my trust in the wrong places. I discovered that people will reject you, people will hurt you, and cause wounds in your life. But when I discovered who I truly was in Christ, I never experienced those things. Or not that I didn't experience those things, they rarely came. Why? Because I had my identity in the wrong place, but because I started putting my identity in the right places and who I truly was in the right place, that became a fruitful place for me. It really did. I rarely ever experience rejection in, as it relates to people because I'm at a place now in my life where I don't put too much trust in people who may have the tendency to disapprove of you or to cause pain in your life or devastation in your life. These things happen. So I started to compare what I do to who I am and I notice a huge difference. Your true identity, which is how you see yourself, your perce perception of yourself, and it's not shaped by our life experiences, but shaped by God himself. Isn't that good news? Let's read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 says, For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. Everything people say you're not, God says you are. Can I say it again? Everything that people say that you're not, God says you are. I can remember um, being told a few things, and I want to share them with you. Uh, I was told that you are rejected. But God says, I am his cornerstone. Psalms chapter 118, verse 22. Psalms 118, 
verse 22. Let's read that right quick. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The builders are people. You are the cornerstone. So there may be people that may reject you, may hurt you, but you're going to come out on top in the long run. You know why? Because you're strong. You are a rock. You are create, courageous. You are a force in this world that is unstoppable. I was told you are not accepted, but God says, I was chosen in love before the foundation of the world. Let's read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. It says, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight, in love. You were chosen in him. He loved you and chose you before you were even thought of. Before you even came into existence, before you even came into the earth, God had already chose you and loved you and accepted you. So you were accepted before you even thought of So why are we looking for validation elsewhere? We don't have to because he has already accepted us. Number three, I was told that you are forgotten. We forget about you or they'll say forget you. Those are hurtful words to say to someone, do you think? But God says, I will never forget you. Do you see the comparison here? You have people that may say one thing, but God says something totally different. Let's read Isaiah chapter 49. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 15. Isaiah 49, verse 15 says, Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no Compassion on the child she born. Though she may forget, I will never forget you. How can a mother, let's just break it down. How can a mother bring their child into the world? Or as it talks about it here, how can they bring a child? How can you bring a child where and just automatically forget the child? Even in those cases where that may happen, God says, I will never forget you. Even those who may forget you. Some people even pretend like you don't even exist. God says, I will never forget you. I think you get the point. While we may experience rejection in life, it gives me confidence to know that in Christ there is no rejection, nothing but pure, unconditional love. And the limitless love is what helped me. I know who I am. Do you? It's time for you to discover and correct your identity. And not only discover and correct your identity, but it's time for you to own it. Join me next week as we continue our series, The Walk Through Rejection. Next week we'll be talking about rejection is a blessing in disguise. Don't miss it. I believe you will be truly blessed. Hi, my name's Heather. Thank you for watching the Brother Henry and You Show today. If you've enjoyed the show today, visit us at facebook.com backslash the Brother Henry and You Show. Thank you for watching and have a blessed day.